can we? Should we start the prayers? Huh? She was. Okay. When we can chant, chant Hare Krishna while waiting. Because we we recite the prayer and then we're gonna be quiet if it doesn't turn up. So we might as well just <laughs> chant Hare Krishna and wait. Yeah, I can chant maybe one round or something. Jai. Satyam param dimahi. O my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. 
the original living being. The original living being. <coughs> By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra. Paramo nirmat sarunam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapo trayon mulanam. mahamuni krite. Kimva parir ishwaraha. Sadyo hidi avarudyate tra. Kriti bihi susu subis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam uh, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Sukumukad amrita dravya sam yutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahuraska bhuvibhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice is already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyan Taksto Bhadyani Vidu Nati Suhit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, 
and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya shiyante yashikarmani siyante yashikarmani Drista Evat Manishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 9. Yate jasa nripa siro nigrim ahan mahartam. Text nine. Aryo nujastava gayuta gayayuta satva virya. Tinahita pramata nat makaya bupa. Tinahita pramata nat makaya bupa. Yanmochitastad anayam balim advare. Translation. Your respectable younger brother, who possesses the strength of 10,000 elephants, killed by his grace, Jarasandha, whose feet were worshipped by many kings. These kings had been brought for sacrifice in Jarasandha's Mahabhairava Yagya. But they were thus released. Later they pay tribute to your majesty. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. 
Jarasandha was a very powerful king of Magadha. And the history of his birth and activities is also very interesting. His father, King Brihadratha, was also a very prosperous and powerful king of Magadha. But he had no son, although he married two daughters of the king of Kashi. Being disappointed in not getting a son from either of the two queens, the king, along with his wives, left home to live in a forest for austerities. But in the forest, he was benedicted by one great rishi to have a son. And he gave him one mango to be eaten by the queens. The queens did so and were very soon pregnant. The king was very happy to see the queens bearing children. But when the ripe time approached, the queens delivered one child in two parts one from each of the queen's wombs. The two parts were thrown in a forest where a great she-demon used to live, and she was glad to have some delicate flesh and blood from the newly born child. Out of curiosity, she joined the two parts, and the child became complete and regained life. The she-demon was known as Jara, and being compassionate on the childless king, she went to the king and presented him with the nice child. The king was very pleased with the she-demon and wanted to reward her for according, her according to her desire. The she-demon expressed her desire that the child be named after her, and thus the child was surnamed Jarasanda, or one who was joined by Jara the she-demon. In fact, this Jarasandha was born as one of the parts and parcels of the demon Viprachiti, the saint by whose benedictions the queens bore the child was called Chandra Koshika, who foretold of the child before his father, Bihadratha. Since Jarasandha possessed demoniac qualities from birth, Naturally, he became a great devotee of Lord Shiva and uh, the Lord of all ghostly and demoniac men. Ravana was a great devotee of Shiva and also Jarasandha. He used to sacrifice all arrested kings before Lord Mahabhairava or Shiva. And by his military power, he defeated many small kings and arrested them to butcher before Mahabhairava. There are many devotees of Lord Mahabhairava or Kalabhairava in the province of Bihar, formerly called Magad, Magadha. Jarasandha was a relative of Kamsa, the material uncle of Krishna. And therefore, after Kamsa's death, King Jarasandha became a great enemy of Krishna. And there were many fights between Jarasandha and Krishna. Lord Krishna wanted to kill him but he also wanted that those who served as military men for Charasanda might not be killed. Therefore, a plan was adopted to kill him. Krishna, Bhima, and Arjuna together went to Charasanda in the dress of poor brahmanas and begged charity from King Charasanda. Charasanda never refused charity to any brahmanas, and he performed many sacrifices also, yet he was not on a par with devotional service. Lord Krishna, Bhima, and Arjuna asked Jarasandha for the facility of fighting him. And it was settled that Jarasandha would fight Bhima only. So all of them were both guests and combatants of Jarasandha. And Bhima and Jarasandha fought every day for several days. Bhima became disappointed, but Krishna gave him hints about Jarasandha's being joined together as an infant. And thus Bhima dissected him again and so killed him. All the kings who were detained in the concentration camp to be killed before Mahabhairava were thus released by Bhima. Feeling thus obliged to the Pandavas, they paid tribute to King Yudhisthira. Sila Prabhupada ki jai. Now there are many <laughs> very important points and interesting points. Uh, number one is 
that whenever you want to accomplish something, material or spiritual, you have to perform austerities. And even um, uh, Rishabhadeva, Lord Rishabhadeva told his sons, hundred sons, that this life is meant for performing austerities for purification of the desire for sense gratification so that one can come to the stage of uh, being free from the, from the modes of material nature so that one can engage in devotional service. So Krishna consciousness is the process of purification because unless one is purified, one cannot engage in devotional service. One has to come to the same level of Krishna. And Krishna is above the influence of the modes of material nature. This is explained by the Lord in the seventh chapter, Yechaiva Satvika Bhava Rajasas Tamasas Chaye Mata Iveti Tanvidi Natvam Aham Te Sute Mai. Know that all states of being, be they of goodness, passion, or ignorance, are manifested by my energy. I am in one sense everything, but I am independent. I am not under the modes of material nature, for they, on the contrary, are within me. So to understand Krishna, one must rise up above the influence of the modes of material nature. Then Krishna says that Tribir Gunamayer Bhavir Abhisabhasarvamidam Jagat. Mohitam Nabijananti Mam Ebya Param Avyayam. Deluded by the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, the whole world does not know me who am above the modes and inexhaustible. So, therefore, one must become transcendental to the modes to begin to understand who is Krishna. And therefore, Krishna says that yesam tvantakatam papam jananam punya karmanam te dvandva mohanir mokta bhajanti mam jitarataha. He says, uh, persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life, and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated, are freed from the dualities of delusion, and they engage themselves in my service with determination. So now, what are the dualities of delusion? Well, as soon as we become attached to the material body, we develop the dualities of delusion. What does that mean? That means that the body is different than the soul. The soul is the real person. But if we identify with the body, we become subject to dualities that delude us. What are those dualities? Heat and cold, happiness and distress, riches and poverty, love and hate, and so on. Uh, there's so many dualities in the material world due to becoming attached to the temporary body. If we're attached to the soul and its eternal relationship to Krishna, we have no uh, dualities of delusion. We're not deluded by these dualities. Why? Because our purpose in life is one. One meaning to serve Krishna and please Krishna. The perfection of life is Hari Toshanam, pleasing Lord Hari. So therefore, Viva Seat Mika Budhir Ikaha Kurunandana Bahusaka Hinantascha Budayo Viva Sayanam. Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose, and their aim is one. O oh, beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branched. So having this oneness of aim of life, what is that oneness? Sam Siddhir Haritoshanam, the perfection of life is to please Lord Hari or to please Krishna. Then we're free of duality of, du of the du delusions of duality or duality of delusions. But as long as we have Attachment to sense gratification, 
and then it says, We have a Satmika Bud here. Sorry. We have a Satmika Bud here. Samadho na vidyate. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things, the res resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, samadhi means a fixed mind. And the Vedic dictionary, the Nirukti says, samyak adyate smin atma tattva yatat myam. When the mind is fixed for understanding the self, it is said to be in samadhi. Samadhi is never possible for persons interested in material sense enjoyment, nor for those who are bewildered by such temporary things. They are more or less condemned by the process of material energy. So, uh, we cannot be ekaha uh, kurunandana, which means having a let's call it a one-track mind that is uh, being fully dedicated to pleasing Guru and Krishna. So what happens by becoming attached to the body, we develop this delusion of duality because there's a difference between the body and the soul. They're two different things. But if we become attached to the body, then we are affected by duality happiness and distress, riches and poverty, love and hate, etc. That's why a devotee rises above this duality. As Krishna tells Arjuna, Trigunya Vishaya Veda, Nis Trigunya Bhavarjana, Nirdvandva, Mirdvandva, Nitya Sattvasto, Niryoga, Shema Atmavan. He says, the Vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of nat material nature or Arjuna become transcendental to these three modes, be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the self. So that's why Prabhupada strongly recommends simple living, high thinking. Simplify everything in one's life. Reduce one's material needs to a bare minimum so that you can have a peaceful mind and not be attached to increasing material sense gratification and objects and gadgets for it. So, uh, therefore, by that self-restraint and natural tendency toward austerity and living a simple life, one becomes free of the dualities of delusion by engaging maximum energy and intelligence in the service of Krishna. This is called purification. And the whole goal of Krishna consciousness is to become purified of the material concept of life. So, therefore, we see that uh, The material world of demons is a very complicated place. And all demons are not always all bad. Just like the she-demon, known as Chara, she became compassionate on the childless king. <laughs> and uh, Brihad Rata. And out of her curiosity, she joined the two lumps of flesh and a child emerged and she out of compassion she took the child to the childless king and gave it to him and because the king was pleased with the she demon he wanted to reward her according to her desire and her desire was name this child after me so the name the child was named Jara Sunda or one who was joined by Jara the she demon now such things are not fantasy. They're fact. And there are many people like Jara. Uh, she was basically a demoniac wish, witch. And she was glad to have some delicate flesh and blood from a newly born child. 
There are people like that. You read the news and you'll see there are people like that today that kill children and eat them and do all kinds of very nasty things. Do you have anything like this in Africa? Never heard, right? But we have it in America. Can you believe that? Sometimes the Americans laugh and say, well, the Africans are, you know, savages. They're, not, they're, more, they're more cultivated than the Americans. I mean, would, would an African lady kill her own child and eat it? You have people like that in the United States. No way. Yeah. You have it in the United States. It happens every day. You just have to read the newspaper. You'll see. <laughs> it's terrible. It's, it's horrible. And you have the, these people now. They're worshipers of the devil. And uh, they drink each other's blood. They have a ritual where they drink each other's blood. And they do all kinds of crazy, crazy things. Horrible things. Okay, so it's nothing new. This is just going on back in the time of Lord Krishna. Okay. So it says, since Jarasandha possessed demonic qualities, demoniac qualities from birth, naturally he became a great devotee of Lord Shiva. Now Lord Shiva has three types of devotees. One are demons and ghosts. Two are um, people in the modes of ignorance. Right? And three are Brahmins. Yeah, there's three. Ghosts. Ghosts and demons, demons and, and witches and things like that. And then you have people, you know, in the mode of ignorance, right? That smoking marijuana and things like that, you know. And then you have uh, Brahmins. Uh, well, they're, you know, they're Buddhas, yeah. I mean, he, he has these ghost followers, let's put it like that, yeah, yeah, right? Perfect. And then he has the, the marijuana j smoking gang, right? And then he has Brahmanas. And they perform rituals. They perform Vedic sacrifices. <laughs> this uh, sacrificing kings to Mahabhairava, it's done with the Vedic uh, mantras. You see? So, I mean, even in Seattle here, we have, we have uh, Shiva Brahmanas. You know, they're, they're, they're reciting the Vedas. And they're performing all kinds of uh, ritual performances for material opulence. Therefore, oftentimes it's said that the followers of Shiva are you often are powerful and rich, and the followers of Vishnu are uh, poor and uh, sometimes considered weak. <laughs> so, uh, there are many devotees of Lord Mahabhairava, or Kala Bhairava, in the province of Bihar, formerly called Magadha. And Jarasana is a relative of Kamsa, the material uncle of Krishna. So as soon as Kamsa was killed, Jarasandha became the enemy of Krishna. And then he attacked Mathura at least 18 times. And 18 times he was defeated. And finally, uh, Krishna, then even the next time, Krishna and Balaram ran away so that Mathura would no longer be bothered and, and, and destroyed by this Jarasandha. Because every time he came back with a bigger army of demons, and uh, and then finally Krishna uh, decided to kill him. So it explains how Krishna and Arjuna and Bhima went to see him. And when they revealed themselves and what they wanted, they wanted to fight with him, Jarasandha refused to fight with Krishna because he said, Krishna is just a cowherd boy. He's a cowboy. We don't, <laughs> he doesn't deserve to fight with me. I'm a Kshatriya, right? And... Uh, Arjuna, he said, Arjuna is, uh, uh, he found something wrong with Arjuna, and he chose to fight with Bhima, right? Because Bhima's... Something like that. He says something like that. And, but Bhima, he chose to fight with because, first of all, Bhima was married to a demon, Hidimbi, you know? And, uh, and... He was, a, he was a muscular guy, really strong, you know. So, so Jarasandha was not a coward. 
He's not a coward. Right. And Bhima couldn't defeat him until Krishna told him the secret of Charasandra. And then Bhima was able to kill him. So, therefore, a plan was adopted to kill him. But now you see, Jarasandha himself never refused charity to brahmanas. You see, this is very complex personalities. He never refused charity to brahmanas. And he didn't refuse to fight either, right? But he didn't want to fight with people he thought were lesser than him, like Krishna or Arjuna. He wanted to fight someone he thought was equal to him. So Jarasandha would fight Bhima only. So all of them were guests and combatants of Jarasandha, and Bhima and Jarasandha fought every day for several days. So then finally Bhima defeats and kills Jarasandha. And then all the kings who were detained in the concentration camps, see they had concentration camps 5,000 years ago, uh, who were going to be killed before Mahabhairava were thus re released by Bhima. Feeling thus obliged to the Pandavas, they paid tribute to King Yudhisthira. So evil has been present since the beginning of time, even in the, uh, uh, the uh, Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, Dwapara Yuga, right, and Kali Yuga. But there were not so many demons before, but they were very powerful. But today, almost everyone is a demon. You know, so it's a very inauspicious you know, time. Hare Krishna. But because of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement, it's most auspicious for devotees. Because if you like to preach, almost everyone you meet doesn't know anything about Krishna. So it's a great time for preaching. And yesterday, I saw his school. Here. When I was telling about, uh, told him about the signs of the soul, you know, you don't know, you don't, if you don't know yourself, how can you understand things? Yes. But you have to know who you are. Unless you know who you are, everything you do will be just failure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we, we started this question, we asked questions about, as, as usual, we find we're not a party, you know, we the soul. And then listening carefully. And then I said, so if you were not the fact why are we taking care of this body then? We're wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. It was a good question. And I told you, look, this body is, uh, is a gift from shame. Without this body, you can never you know, function in this material world. You need the body. Just you need a car, you need a machine. You know? So, uh, but uh, there are different species living beings, different bodies, but human body is valuable because we have to take care of this body in order to uh, undergo the uh, process of self-organization. Yes. So we have to take care of the body. And then if we, uh, uh, before death comes, you know, if we don't realize our spiritual nature through this body, by acting through this body, then we will take birth again. You know? So we will we'll remain suffering and the material world. And it's really quite very interesting. Nice. Yeah. See, the body is made specifically for self-realization. But you have a choice. Either you use it for self-realization to understand your relationship with God, or you use it for sense gratification and waste the human form of life. Right. Then you don't need a human body in the next life. You go back into the animal world or even lower. It's it's really you mentioned person I spoke the day before, okay. it's a question of choice, you know, yeah. do we have a choice, but yeah, you have a choice, either you want to uh, know God, or you want to forget him. Yeah, yeah, rejoice, and you're responsible for the results of those choices. And yeah, and then I, I, I emphasize and say that this is possible in human form of life, and if 
given form of life, you have to know who you are. You have to realize the spiritual. Yeah, it's only in the human form of life that you can self-realize. You can't do it in an animal body. So it's a rare thing to have a human form of, of birth. And if you don't use it for uh, atma tattva, knowing the, the reality of the soul and its relationship with God, you, you're not given a human body again. You, you, you don't need a human body if all you want to do is eat, sleep, mate, and defend. Because the animals can do these things without uh, working hard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You never heard before. Yes. And it makes sense to them. Yes. So that means they're going to be really uh, motivated to read the books. Prabhup Prabhupada says in one letter that the way we should preach should be positive. We shouldn't dwell on all the negatives. Right. We should show people what how wonderful it would be to become self realized and understand your relationship with Krishna and become free of anxiety and doubts and dualities. You become happy. You're, you're relieved of miseries. You, you understand how fortunate you are. And you, you're not even interested in, in liberation from the cycle of birth and death. And you realize this is the only way to attract Krishna and, and so forth. There's so many benefits that you get by becoming self-realized. You know. But they're always fascinated when you really, when you make it clear that we're not, you're not the body, the spirit soul. Yes. And then, and then, and then they look a little bit, you know, try to think about it. They say, look, you say my body, you never say I body. Yes. They like children, and then they understand. Yes. And then, and then, and they say, unless you understand the spiritual nature, you can never solve your problem. Yes. And everything gonna tr any attempt will be futile because you won't get anywhere without understanding first of all who you are. And then I give the example when you do the math. It's right at the beginning if you get something wrong. The whole thing is wrong. At the end you can go on, on with the operation at the end the final result will be wrong. <laughs> and then like Yes. Which is well also if you have thousands of zeros in your life, mm -hmm. it's equal to zero. But if you put one in front of it, it becomes a big number. So by adding Krishna to your life, all the zeros become significant. Yeah. And without Krishna, they're zero. <laughs> you can add up 10,000 zeros, it's still zero. Zero plus zero, zero times zero. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 